the cloud. All right, good evening, everybody. Welcome to our December 1st uh, COAC membership meeting. Um, today, we're, um, our agenda is, is uh, slightly light, but it is full of good information. So I hope that um, you all enjoy slash participate as we go through it. Um, so we'll hear from Nicole Simpson and uh, about business insurance for gig inside hustler, hustlers. Uh, we'll hear from Justin Moodley, I believe, uh, regarding some digital tools that you can use for 2021. And then we'll just talk about some upcoming events and opportunities that we're aware of and from the community. And we'll go into some intros and um, updates from the floor. So that'll be a time if you have something that you want to share with the group, um, you would uh, insert it there. If it is something that you would like uh, to be included on the recording, just drop me a message in the chat and I'll make sure that we get you in before we go off, off the record. Um, so with that, I would love to turn it over to Miss Nicole Simpson from Go Fund Your Life. Oh, awesome. Oh, look, and you even have a little presentation up and everything. Thanks, Avery. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Can you all hear me? Great. My name is Nicole Simpson, and um, I'm the president and CEO of Go Fund Your Life, and we are a financial education and resource firm. Um, one of the resources that we do provide is small business insurance, and we've been able to get this for a really niche market. Um, we work in a, a small, basically micro business space. So oftentimes we come across individuals who are just doing gigs like DJs, contractors, uh, musicians, artists, and different individuals like that who are needing to have general liability insurance for a short term period of time. Um, the insurance industry hasn't really caught up to this really gig economy where people are kind of just doing odd jobs versus doing things year around. Um, and a couple of companies have really gotten it down really well. So Thimble is a new um, market that has just recently surfaced. They're actually backed by a larger insurance company called Markel. Um, but what Thimble's been able to do is come in and offer short-term um, insurance policies for general liability and professional liability coverages for individuals who only need to have coverage for a short period of time. So uh, there's 140 different risk classes that are out there, and it's a really great opportunity for individuals to get the coverage they need um, at a really cost-effective rate. As you can see there from that slide, uh, they have policies that can go by the job, by the month, by the hour, and they even start as low as $5 for the subscription for your insurance. Um, this is a great thing for agency owners to be able to have this to offer because oftentimes someone will come to me and say, I want to get an insurance policy for my business. I need general liability because I've got X, Y, or Z coming up. And then they may have a seasonal position. So they may only be working for two or three months out of the year or, or three to six months out of the year. Or maybe they get halfway through and find out that they have misprojected their revenue goals and now they can no longer afford that monthly premium. So as an insurance agent, you know, that's difficult for, for us to be able to build a business when folks are kind of falling on and off the book that way. Um, and it's also obviously difficult for the business owners to be able to maintain coverage. So this is something that's new that has entered the market. Um, they have allowed it to come out to certain independent agents. And uh, I am one of the first agents in Ohio to be marketing this particular program through Symbol. So literally, it's super easy to quote. Um, I'm going to drop the link here in the chat if anybody wants to just check it out and see what the rates look like. It takes literally 60 seconds to go on. You put in your zip code, what it is that you do, how much coverage that you actually need, and um, it will spit you out a quote that you can actually bind and get your certificate to hand off to whoever needs it right away. Um, and, and that way, you don't have to go through the traditional insurance model. So... Um, if there are people who are in Central Ohio African American Chamber who are needing this type of insurance for a small gig, a DJ, or something like that, I definitely encourage you to check this out because um, it's a great way to get the coverage you need for a short period of time. Oh, thank you so much, Nicole. Um, when I saw this come through, I was like, we definitely have to share this information with the with the membership. So I'm glad that you were able to uh, join us on a very short notice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Are there any um, brief questions uh, for Nicole? Uh, there's a question in the chat. Um, is this different from a rider? Yeah, so this is not a rider. So these are actual standard general um, 
general liability policies, professional liability policies for up to 40 different risk classes. So it, it's not a rider at all, but I literally had someone go in and uh, get a policy for six hours because they had a contract with the city of Columbus where they were going to be going in and doing something. But because of COVID, they're not doing an annual contract. It was just one thing that they needed to go in on consulting for, and they didn't want to spend uh, $1,500 for that consulting general liability policy. They wanted to spend, I think they ended up paying like 75 bucks, but that was still better. And there's not going to be any um, negative ramifications of saying that they canceled or that they dropped their insurance or anything like that. Cause they literally only got it for that short period of time. So. Wow. That's going to be a game changer when we're talking about businesses um, and how they're competing for contracts, because we know that sometimes the larger policies can be a barrier if you know it's only you only need it for a second, but it's still going to cost you that whole amount um, that keeps people out of some some good jobs, which will help them um, grow their capacity. So absolutely, absolutely. So that's why we wanted to make sure we brought this out um, and make sure people know about it. Uh, it's being marketed out there, symbol. Uh, I've been seeing it everywhere, but they just opened up an independent agent channel, so that way you can still work with an agent. And then if your job goes from temporary and seasonal to more permanent, then you can reach out to your insurance agent and then obviously transition into a more traditional type of a policy that has more bells and whistles. Very cool. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So yeah, um, the link uh, for this is in the chat. We'll make sure that we include um, information in uh, our recap, both for the link to get a quote and then also Nicole's contact information uh, just for other questions that may come up. So yeah. yeah, the certificate does reflect the time period um, that you do have the coverage for. And that's really important because they don't want you to, you know, get a certificate that says you have it for a year, but you really only had it for six hours. So um, on the six hour certificate, they can't do it hourly. So it's going to probably just show a, a full day on that certificate. Because um, even though you only need it for six hours, the least time that they can write it for is, is 24 hours. So you might get one that says from December 1st through December 2nd uh, as the expiration date. Awesome. Well, thank you, Nicole. Uh, and uh, yeah, if, uh, everybody, if you need it or if you know someone who is in the need of this kind of um, resource, please share the information, uh, share it widely. And we'll again, make sure we share it in our recap. Awesome. Thanks guys so much. I have literally have another call, so I got to jump off, but you guys have a great evening. Thank you again for being here. You too. Uh huh. Bye bye. All right. And next we have uh, Justin uh, from or Justin Moodley. And I'm sorry that this this slide isn't as uh, populated. Um, <laughs> uh, but whatever information you share, we'll also re uh, digest it for a recap. But uh, Justin, uh, if you if you're here, I believe. Yeah. Hey, Avery, if you give me control, I can share something that Justin forwarded to me right before the call. Cool. Okay. One second. I also dropped the link. I uploaded it and dropped the link in the chat. So if anyone wants to jump in there, they can also see it there. Cool. Thank you. All right, Anthony, you should be able to uh, present or share. Okay. Uh, hold on. I got to find it first. Sorry. So Justin, as I find this, you want to just do a quick intro? Uh, yeah. I'll, go ahead. So I'm a digital strategist at Lasadin. Um, I'm the founder of the company. We primarily consult for really big marketing agencies. And so to hire people who understand analytics, to build paid advertising programs, to you know optimize websites and do things like that. Traditionally, it's really expensive to hire nerds in big markets at big agencies. And so we're kind of a smaller resource. So we play in that middle ground between the really large agencies and being a service provider to them, specifically on small to medium sized business marketing. And so uh, in a conversation with Anthony, uh, we had mentioned some different tools that either our agency was using for ourselves or for other partners. And we came up with a list of seven things that I think are tremendously helpful most of them are, are free or really low cost that can help augment people's businesses significantly. Yeah, and I just thought that it would be, from my perspective, the conversation that I've had and the work that I've seen with Justin, I just thought that considering everything that's going on with COVID and all the different changes happening as we start thinking about digital, virtual, and all those platforms out there, I just thought it would be good for the group just to 
just to hear some ideas. I mean, some of these things you may be familiar with, some of them you may not, but I think that anything that we can find out or get insights on as it relates to digital tools moving forward is extremely important. So I just thought it was just important for the group just to hear a few things and and let Justin just share, uh, like I said, just a couple of thoughts and ideas for what they're looking at as it relates to 2021. So the document is up, Justin, so it's all yours. Awesome. Um, so number one, Google Analytics for anyone who has a website or who is using a tool that integrates with Google Analytics. It's a free tool that allows you to track where traffic is coming from, what they're doing when they're on your site and traditionally uh, can expand into other audience information, you know, interests, demographics, age ranges, things like that are all uh, that you're able to pull from a free platform um, that's relatively simple to drop into a website. And so if you're moving into your first website or if you have a Shopify website, or if um, you just wanna track maybe a personal branding website uh, where you wanna to understand what kind of level of traffic is coming in. It's a really great solution that integrates with a lot of different platforms um, really easily. And so we recommend that if, you know, the digital world is important for you and you wanna be tracking what's happening so that you can improve and do more of that, uh, it's definitely the number one tool that we, we recommend everyone implements. Uh, number two, Apollo. Uh, this is a tool that not a lot of people know about. Uh, a similar competitor would be a company called Leadsmith. So Apollo was the first company to take the entire uh, LinkedIn database and reconcile all of that data against a bunch of other data points for businesses. And so if you're a B2B business and you're looking to get the email address of people who are within a certain state or a certain region who have certain job titles at certain types of businesses, it has this profoundly sophisticated set of tools where you can filter down the same way that you would on LinkedIn in a premium profile, but then you can send emails or pull the email addresses of those people and you can go a step further and even program drip email campaigns. And so for our partners, uh, we help them with institutionalizing the drip email campaigns and the communications on the lead lists that, that get created. Um, but for ourselves, we use that tool to identify people at other large agencies that fit the profile of who our customers are. And it helps us figure out what the CEO's email is, what the VP's email is. Um, there's about an 80%, 85% chance uh, that it matches correctly and that you're getting their real information. And so for anyone who's operating a business where you know, you're not dealing with everybody as your potential customer, but you have to get really focused to certain types of businesses or certain roles at companies. It's a really great tool to be able to data harvest and, and learn more about your audience, including pulling their contact information so that you can email, phone call, or, or connect with them socially if you want. Uh, number three is Clavio. Uh, we have been um, setting up more Clavio accounts than MailChimp accounts when it comes to email marketing for a lot of our partners. A big reason was because Shopify ended their integration with MailChimp and created one with Clavio. So if you happen to be someone who sells online, it's uh, a really easy integration that's low cost. It, it starts with free up to a certain amount of email size, and then it charges you only as it gets bigger. So as long as you focus on adding email lists that are, are profitable lists for your organization, nobody really beats the price and they tend to integrate better with Shopify um, for things like card abandonment and other events that you're trying to trigger off with your, your e-commerce. And so it's definitely something that we would absolutely recommend for everybody. Uh, number four is business manager from Facebook. Uh, business manager for a lot of people who are already running Facebook ads or have a Facebook page is just, it seems like an additional step, but it's definitely a good one for the fact that Facebook has been changing the way um, things work in terms of how you manage your ads account and how you manage your pages. And so if that is a big part of your business, the last thing that you want is all of your assets tied into just you as a person, as an individual profile. You want to create a business manager account with a general business email that additionally can connect you to all of those accounts so that you always have multiple owners. Uh, 
especially since election time and we're, we're seeing it happen more often is people are inadvertently getting flagged on LinkedIn because they've been really, or not LinkedIn on Facebook because they've been really cautious about what people are posting, especially during times like that. And so if you're uh, a single owner from a personal profile who's connected to those things, it can sometimes be hard to recover your account if you get flagged and, and you need to access things. And so that's just a recommendation so that it's easier for people to maintain assets. Uh, number five is Google Workplace. Uh, that was formerly G Suite. Um, a lot of the startups and smaller businesses that we work with utilize them specifically for their email platform and then just grew into utilizing uh, things like Google Drive as opposed to Dropbox and then starting to move to more cloud-based and web-based uh, content creation for documents internally. And so that is some uh, it, it was a great platform for us that is, is relatively inexpensive so that you can centralize all that without having the upfront costs of, you know, creating your own email addresses uh, and, and spending the amount that traditionally you would on um, not just email infrastructure, but office for all of your employees or all your team members and all those other things that just come inherent with uh, what, what Drive does through Workspace. Uh, number six is Google Web Console. Um, the last two are specific to SEO. I would say step one with Google Web Console is it's the easiest tool, it's free, and it allows you to connect uh, to a website to get diagnostics information. And so anything that Google search would think isn't um, ideal for the way that you're positioning your website, it will notify you of and give you directions on, on how to solve that. If you want to take it a step further and you want to focus on SEO to actually grow your business, not just kind of cover your bases and make sure best practices are in place, um, Moz is a premium solution. Most people are paying $100 to $200 a month on that, but it's because they would rather spend $100 to $200 a month on something that adds a long-term value to their business rather than maybe add dollars. And so I think that's something right there where if growing organically and getting people to see you... Um, through discovering you based on things like keywords, starting off with web console and then getting to a point where you can verify that that works, moving into Moz would be a great opportunity. And so these are the seven tools. Uh, these are seven that, you know, as I mentioned, we're using internally as well as we're managing on behalf of our clients. Um, there are links to each one of these platforms here. The description for each uh, are, are clearly just the data that they share and that they're, they're putting out there for how they quantify their their tools and their business. Um, I would definitely recommend looking into reviews on each and looking into competitors. These just happen to be the ones that we most often utilize and the ones that have changed businesses the most over the last year. But that's all I have. Cool. Thank you so much, Justin. Um, are there any questions from the group? There's a lot of good information. I'll be sure that I um, include that the flyer that you shared in our uh, recap email. Um, and yeah, I know that I personally am going to uh, look into that Facebook business manager, um, especially as we're looking at how um, we're managing as an organization and other uh, businesses that we're working with, I think that is, that's a tool that I didn't really think about because obviously we're, I'm an admin on the account, but the fact that the business can itself now have its own management uh, account, I think is going to be helpful for a lot of businesses uh, who have multiple people involved. All righty. Well, thank you again, Justin, for being with us today. Uh, and okay, so I'm going to uh, pull back up the shares, uh, my screen. Actually, okay, so I just want to take us through a couple of opportunities that are upcoming. And I know this is a lot of information on the screen, but I didn't want to cut out anything. Um, so you'll have this presentation shared to you as a PDF, you'll be able to uh, read it closer. Um, but I, as I find the different leadership academies and the different um, programs that I think you might benefit from. I, I try to bring the information to you so you at least can go do some more information gathering of your own. Um, this one came across my desk from a couple of different sources today, so I wanted to share it. But Ascend Columbus has a um, MBE leadership program. Um, it's a five-month training program for executives and um, senior uh, level 
uh, members of your organization um, that you would be receiving from uh, Ohio State Fisher College of Business. Um, and it looks like they do um, do it cohort style with the next um, one starting in February, but the application for it is actually due uh, by December 15th. Um, it, they, it does say they're taking from certified minority owned businesses. So you may need to have uh, MBE certification um, from uh, the city or the state. Um, but if you go to ascendcolumbus.com, you can find some additional information or you can um, reach out to George Sims, whose information is on the slide. Um, but yeah, definitely something to look into if uh, you're looking for uh, some growth as far as uh, your business administration skills are concerned. Um, and this for this cohort, you'd be uh, participating with businesses from the Midwest. So that'd be that'd be kind of cool to um, as far as peer development as well. Um, uh, so if you are really um, any of your employees have had COVID-19, um, and maybe uh, weren't able to work, so they lost some wages or had to work less. Uh, there is a grant that is available uh, from the city of Columbus that will, um, from the city of Columbus that will, I think the, it'll be 900 or $1,200 depending on the applicant and the question, uh, but it's a grant uh, process that you can go through. I think they have a million dollars that they're trying to get out to people who um, have been impacted by COVID-19. So you would have to show that you had a test positive uh, diagnosis, and there's some other questions that they'll ask you. Um, but if you go to cul.org slash right to recover, you can find out some more information. Again, this is, um, please share this information uh, far and wide, even if it's not you, share it across your networks, um, because we want to make sure that that money gets into people's hands, especially if I'm thinking of, um, and I want to make sure I share this with Letha Pugh uh, with that service project, thinking about like restaurant um, employees, or other service providers who um, it's uh, your wage is based on being present. Um, and so I would, um, I will share that as well and make sure that I include this information in the um, recap. Sorry, I'm typing. You all know I can multitask so well. Um, okay, now uh, next, sorry for the big graphic, but I wanted to scream it. No, I'm kidding. Um, so the Franklin County Board of Commissioners and the, uh, their new Office of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion is hosting a virtual conference, their first, uh, next week, uh, December 10th. The information is there. Uh, you'll hear from a variety of different um, presenters and also, uh, but the, ho uh, the whole theme is um, right there, new expectations for expanding minority entrepreneurship and economic equity. Um, so yeah, check it out. I'm not sure the entire um, agenda for the day, but if you uh, go to the event, which is uh, linked there, and when you have this PowerPoint, you will actually be able to click the screen and it takes you right to the to the website to register, uh, but check it out. I believe it's free, um, so there's no harm in um, checking out, see what they have to offer for that day. I have to say it, because I have to say it, we have so many underinsured individuals uh, who are as entrepreneurs and also as part of the workforce of small businesses. So please encourage uh, yourself, your employees, whomever, uh, to make sure you take part in open enrollment. I uh, have here Sandra Moody Gresham's information because she shared this graphic that I chopped up. Sorry, slash thanks, Sandra. <laughs> uh, but yeah, make sure uh, you are uh, getting covered. December 15th is the deadline with coverage beginning on January 1st. Uh, Sandra, was there anything that you wanted to share or did I miss anything? No, thank you for sharing. And I just would reiterate that folks need to spread the word because there's a lot of people we know that do not have coverage. Um, and folks you think have coverage really don't have coverage. So now is the window. We, we got approximately two weeks left uh, to get folks enrolled. And I'll drop in the chat my um, email and contact information. And thank you guys for sharing. No problem. Thank you for sharing. All right, let's see. Okay, so before, um, actually, I'm gonna just keep it going. I'm gonna keep the recording going because we always have good stuff as we're networking. Um, so now we're gonna go around the horn and do uh, getting to know you. So as if we were together, we always try to put together time where we're able to interface um, as a membership and as a group uh, to see who else is here. So there are 18 of us. Um, so keep that in mind when you're doing your introduction, <laughs> um, but uh, we want to know who you are, your company, what you do, um, what you're looking forward to from 2021, 
Um, but also, uh, if you have anything that you want to share with whomever is watching this recording, also just the group uh, all together, please uh, feel free to say it as you're introducing yourself. Um, so I'm just remember what's on the screen. Um, it's not hard, but uh, I'm going to stop the share so that we can see who's here. And I'm going to go around my screen counterclockwise um, just for funsies. OK, so uh, first we're going to go to Tasha. Hello, everyone. Um, it's good to see you this month. And I am Tasha Yarborough, the founder and CEO of Kumba Creative Group, also a proud board member of Poet. <laughs> and um, I am a, a tax and accounting specialist. So this is kind of getting to be my season. Um, you know, if you have tax needs uh, or accounting needs, um, you can see me. Uh, my website is www.kumbacreativegroup.com. And also in 2021, I'm really looking forward to my new book that I'm putting out. It's a book of poetry under my pen name, Henna Creel. Um, looking to get that published this month um, so that it will have a 2020 copyright date. The name of the book is Hindsight, Indelible Warnings Tattooed on My Middle Finger. So it is, uh, in my opinion, gonna be an instant classic. And when I have the information of, you know, when it's published and that type of thing, I would definitely bring it to the chamber. Thank you. Uh -huh, sweet. Thanks, Tasha. And congratulations all around slash. I can't wait to read this here, this poetry book. You got to let me know when it comes out. Girl, we had a wine time on Sunday for focus group and it was oh, awesome. On. How come I didn't hear anything about the wine time? Folks? Well, you know what? There is still time for another. We're going to have, we're going to keep this thing going. <laughs> You're going to be on the list. Oh, thank you very much. All right. <laughs> Next, we'll go to Miss Tia. Hello, everyone. A lot of familiar faces. Uh, my name is Tia Johnson. Uh, I got a taste of entrepreneurship back in 2016, uh, where I launched my girls financial education program. And once you get a bite, you never look back. Uh, recently, I launched my baby, Fresh Bloom Bins, and I have to go into my pitch. You know how I'm a homeowner. Every week, I have to roll down my trash can to the curb, and I'm experiencing trash trauma. That's when you're hit with the flies, the maggots, the odor, just all over grossness, right? Well, we have a solution for you. We offer trash bin sanitation curbside. What does that look like? After your trash is picked up by your weekly pickup, our special customized bin uh, comes out and behind the truck and washes it, sanitizes, and actually leaves a peppermint spray, uh, which is a deteriorant for rats and rodents. Uh, we were able to pitch this to the city of Columbus and we are running a pilot program right now, cleaning the 300 gallon bins and look forward to serving the community near you. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Thank you. Uh, and congratulations again on the new start. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, next, let's see. We will go to Diana. Good evening, everybody. Um, Diana Barnett, CEO of Managing Consultant of Eventy Enterprises, um, where we are transforming entrepreneurs into high growth CEOs. And we do that through business planning and strategy, preparation for financing and government contracting. So um, what I'm looking forward to in 2021 is um, expanding some services into uh, digital transformation for small businesses. Um, a lot of our small businesses um, do not have access or do not utilize their technology for productivity in the way that they could. And that could increase profitability. So we are exploring that and plan on offering those services next year. That's exciting. I um, definitely would love to hear more as you uh, roll that out. 
and congratulations on your business plan competition. I got to be a judge at their business plan competition. It was pretty fun. Uh, I always love that. Uh, but we got to hear a lot of good businesses and so well, thought it was a great success. Thank you. And thanks to uh, Otto for uh, sponsoring from Intelligent Office. Appreciate your support for that as well. Yeah. All right, next we shall go to Miss Victoria. Or we will come back to Miss Victoria. <laughs> but how about, I don't know what happened. Um, let's go to Kim. Good evening, everyone. See you happy. I thought you were frozen. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I am Kim Knight. <laughs> I'm the president and CEO of the Columbus Environment Corporation, previously known as the Columbus Compact. And we are a CDC here in the Columbus Central Ohio area. And our focus is on business entrepreneurial growth and real estate development, low to moderate income development. Cool. Thanks, Kim. You're welcome. Let's see. Next, how about... We'll go to Miss Lisa. Hey, Lisa. Hey, <laughs> my name's Lisa Gutierrez. I'm the owner of Dos Hermanos Taco Truck. And uh, we serve authentic Mexican food throughout the city via food trucks and um, concession stands. And we have a space in the North Market downtown. But our new baby is up at Bridge Park. We just opened three weeks ago. We were fortunate enough to be only four restaurants that opened out of 22 at um, the North Market Bridge Park. So if you have a chance, stop up there. Um, there's plenty of room for social distancing because it's just us. <laughs> and uh, what's new and different about this space up there is we put in a uh, Mexican retail area. So we have little gifts like Mexican um, hand, hand embroidered masks and pottery that you might be looking for for a friend who um, is either from Mexico or has visited Mexico. So it's our first attempt at a retail area, if you will. So we are looking forward in 2021 to Mexican cooking classes and I am not the cook. <laughs> <laughs> so it's nice to see everybody on here. Thank hey, you. thank you for being here. And congratulations on the new space. Um, you. If you haven't had those Romanos, you need to try them out, the food is delicious. Um, you. And also, I'm excited for this COAC takeover. I think because we have you, their Lita will be up there. Yeah. Um, I think, is Carnell going to be at uh, that one or downtown, you know? I think downtown for him, but uh, the guys from the pit will be up at Bridge Park. Yes. Yeah. Go team. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah, congratulations. All right, next, how about we hear from Mr. Beatty? Always forget to turn on, turn off my mute. But uh, good evening, everybody. Happy holidays. Um, you know, I just want to say it's a, a blessing to be here with you all. Um, you know, I'm ending the year actually one of my you know best years, and uh, in my in this particular business, intelligent office, intelligent assistant that's been open for about eight years, and this is actually our you know highest sales, highest profitability. And I will say that a large part of that is, you know, due to the black community and um, African American, many African American nonprofits and organizations that have supported our business. Uh, you may have read in the paper that many of my competitors in the co working space have gone out of business. Uh, some of the highest profile ones have gone out of business and closed recently in the last six weeks. Uh, but we're open and thriving. And I think, you know, it's just a testament to, you know, my team's ability to serve, treat people well, and then just understanding who our, you know, who, who our loyal customers are. I mean, we can't, you know, beat all things to all people. But if you really know who you serve well and you give them a lot of what they like, it can work out really well. So, you know, you can go to intelligentoffice.com and see all the details of what we do. But I just wanted to, you know, I had this group together say, I do have some of my customers on the call. I also have people 
like Sandra Moody, who I do business with as well. I've sponsored other people or whatever. I, I love this community and I want to continue to support it. And I'm looking forward to working with all of you again in 2021. Yeah, thanks, Otto. And you followed the prompts. I forgot to get everybody. We're not following the prompts here. Like, what are we excited for for 21? But thank you. <laughs> and also, thank you for, we're one of, uh, at the Urban League, we're one of Otto's clients. So he takes care of us. We, uh, and I'm sure we don't always make it easy. Um, but he think that him and his team uh, definitely make sure that what we need gets get, gets done and um, has helped for sure with the program and launch that I'm that I've done at the Urban League, the Minority Small Business Resiliency Initiative. We I think we have two phone numbers with Auto and we have all yeah. So thank you. Just all I have to say. Thank you, for sure. And Sherry Hamilton, I see you down there. Thanks for your business as well. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, speaking of, hey, Sherry, you want to go next? Hey, Avery. Um, sure. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, happy to be here. Um, I've been away for a while. Unfortunately, I lost my uh, brother suddenly this summer and uh, late this summer. It just kind of threw things into a tizzy. So I only had enough energy to focus on my businesses, but um, <laughs> uh, happy to be back and will be more active again. Um, but I am a serial entrepreneur um, and I also sit on um, a number of boards. I'm in, on the leadership team of Ohio Black Expo. I'm also on the board of uh, National Association of Minority Veterans Columbus chapter. Um, I'm a veteran. Also, I um, am a partner in a business called Tano Innovation. Uh, we did a soft launch on our first um, software development project, which is Huku, um, and you can find that at hukuapp.com. Um, we're doing a full launch um, in January, and um, we'll have our app in all, all of the app stores, um, and we'll continue to work to um, make, uh, make that available for, um, I think, for chamber members. Um, so we're, we're still working out the details on that, but hopefully that will be something that will be available to you all. Um, and Huku, we're actually rolling it out nationally. So um, when we get, when we become post COVID and people are traveling from New York or Chicago or Florida or California or wherever, um, you know, when they come here, they'll know where to find uh, black owned businesses here in Columbus. So we're excited about that. We also have, um, three other software development projects that we're rolling out. Um, one of them will be in first quarter for sure, and the other two um, we're projecting for second quarter. So we're really excited about that. And my last um, business is Event Pro Management Group, um, which I was kind of dipping my toe in, and even though we uh, <laughs> registered the business three years ago, uh, COVID really threw us into operating that more frequently. So we have uh, managed um, several virtual events, uh, both small and large scale events. So if you're in need of management, especially for conference um, or convention style events, um, let us know. We kind of handle everything from uh, marketing, website registration, um, production, pre-production, post-production on videos and and the like, um, we handle all of that with the event pro management group. So happy to be here. And uh, yes, thanks for the shout out, Otto. I really appreciate uh, your services at Intelligent Office. It's, it's been wonderful. Um, I've been a member with other co-working spaces, but I've really enjoyed um, being a customer there with Intelligent Office. Sherry is a genius designer. Um, I'll just say that. Uh, check out hukuapp.com, first of all. Uh, and then also we're working with her on a project here to build out a directory. Any, if you've seen any of the sites that she does, great. It's crazy, great work. Um, but yeah, and it's good to know about the event management um, in more detail. I know that uh, since we're in this normal, I guess whatever normal is, we'll, I'm sure there are plenty of people who could use those services. And there's a lot of headache to virtual event management on scale. Um, and so to know that you do that is fantastic. Let's see, Miss Victoria, are you back with us? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Uh, barely. Can you? Uh, I don't know. Closer to the mic. Good. 
that better? Yep, a little better. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm Vicki or Victoria Wilson Corbin. I'm the owner of uh, JC Financial Concepts. Dot com. Um, I do uh, similar to Mrs. Tasha, bookkeeping, accounting, taxes. Uh, I do a little uh, financial coaching now. I added that, and I'm looking to add some add some more um, services uh, this coming 2021. Thank you for being here and for your membership. Um, I uh, and I, I will put this on here, but and I'll make sure to um, to share it too in the recap. Miss Victoria just uh, launched the website or relaunched the website, and so we're gonna make sure that we include her information, uh, jcfinancialconcept.com. Um, but yeah, thank you again for being here. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. Let's see. Let's go to Sandra. All right, good afternoon and evening again, everybody. So I'm the owner of Dahan Enterprises Insurance and Financial Services, and we are an all lines insurance agency you know, providing personal auto and homeowners to commercial business policies, as well as employee benefits, medical, and we also provide surety, fidelity and contract bonds and some financial literacy training. So I'm um, just happy to be here and pleased to work with many of the chamber members. So um, I too am excited about this community. Uh, I do wanna share, you guys may have heard, but I think it's important for us to push out that um, the law firm, Voyeur, Sater, Seymour, and I think there's another name, they are providing um, complimentary, complimentary legal services to MBEs right now. Um, they're doing everything from um, corporate structure, document review, um, job descriptions, employee handbooks. Um, so that's their way of supporting uh, minority businesses. And I understand they have agreed to take that service and that opportunity into 2021. So I just feel like we should bombard them um, and I just really got engaged with them to do look at some work for me. So I do want to push that out. I can shoot you an email with the contact. The attorney's name is Janae Stevens, who is kind of leading that project. But um, after speaking with her, I don't think they get enough business. So we need, we need to take advantage of the, the services that they're offering. So, and again, it's open enrollment. So please spread the word. Somebody you know needs health insurance and you need health insurance in a pandemic. Amen to that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys. Yeah, thank you. And yeah, thank you for mentioning the uh, services from uh, Boris um, and Janae, uh, just a fun tidbit. She's actually um, the head of the Black Bar Association as well here on the John Mercer Langston Bar Association. And um, she's good people. She had mentioned it when they were talking about launching it. So I'm glad to hear that it is, it's open for business um, so we can get some people over there. Yes, um, Tasha, I don't think you have to be certified uh, to take advantage of their services. You just need to be a, a minority owned business. I, I think it's only, you sure it's minority? I thought it was only African-American. Yeah, I thought it was African-American. Well, I think that's correct. That is African-American, which makes it special. Yes, for sure. So yeah, I, um, if you have it readily accessible, if you could forward that information, I'll include it in the digest. Okay, I will. Thank you. Let's see here, how about Deborah? Hey guys, I'm Deborah Shade. I am a clinical sexologist and a master sex expert. Um, I do quite a bit. I deliver keynote seminars and workshops all over the nation. Um, I've got one coming up on December 12th. I'm going to um, privilege enough to have a, a workshop selected for Sister Soul uh, annual retreat. Um, it's really huge. Uh, they're registering right now. You can go to sistersoul.com. Um, it's an all day retreat about pleasure. 
uh, for African American women. So I'm super excited about that. Um, my clients are folks of all genders and orientations. I do one on one sessions for getting people to a better sexual experience. Um, so I'm kind of in a niche market right there where I go beyond relationship. I do modern day sex education training. Um, I also am an author of a series called The Sex Journals and the author of 14 intimacy courses that you can get currently now uh, through my website, shademediallc.com. That's me in a nutshell. Thank you. And congratulations on that, uh, the gig. I mean, I know yeah. you speak all over the country. That's, congratulations. That's pretty Thank cool. You. Thank you. Yeah. Let's see here. Who is next? How about Carthage? Let me see. All right. Can you hear me? Yep. All right. I apologize for my video quality. Hello, everybody. I just want to say thank you for having me on this Zoom call tonight. My name is Carthage Harris. I want to thank you, uh, Jay Avery, for pronouncing that properly. It doesn't happen often. Uh, I work for a company called Weatherspoon and Williams LLC. We're a general supply contractor uh, which in the steel procurement division. And what we primarily do is work on uh, construction sites, heavy highway. We work with the Department of Transportation, uh, the Columbus Regional Airport Authority, CODA, uh, and different organizations like that. Uh, we are currently an existing and very uh, profitable, or, or, or should I say, uh, well-established brand in Pennsylvania and a, a number of other states, probably about 10. Uh, we're currently also an emerging business in the Ohio market, uh, which is why I'm here tonight. Uh, I would say that I'm excited about, I'm going to stick to the, uh, the running theme here. I'm, I'm excited about uh, just building relationships with all of the different entities in Ohio. Uh, we are looking forward to opening our uh, satellite office in Columbus soon to come. And like I said, I'm just excited about all of the connections that we are soon to make there. Uh, once again, I just appreciate everybody for uh, having me on this call tonight. And I hope everything is well and everybody is healthy and remaining safe under these current COVID conditions. Cool, thank you for being here. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Uh, as you are entering the market, of course, um, if we can be a resource or a number of people on this, actually on this Zoom probably could be a resource. So uh, feel free to reach out to any and all of us. I'm very hopeful of that, thank you. Yeah, let's go to Zuleen. I apologize, I had to take myself off mute. My name is Zelene Adams. I'm the CEO of Z Promotions. Our uh, purpose is to get you noticed and make you memorable through creative product branding. And those vehicles being things such as promotional products and corporate apparel. We've been in business for 14 and a half years. We're here in the um, Columbus, Ohio area. We're proud to be a member of COAC. I also serve on the marketing committee. And um, you know, I would just like to put out there that um, just as Avery said, you know, if there's anything that I can do to be a resource to anyone, please feel free to reach out. Um, I do believe in, you know, giving back. I've received so much uh, through COAC, so I am here to give back. And um, I appreciate everyone being on the call. Thank you. Cool. Thank you, Zuli. Um, Let us now go to uh, Ms. McQuetta. Are you with us? Okay, we may come back to Ms. McQuetta. Uh, let's see, how about Anthony? Hello, everyone. Hope you all are having a great evening. My name is Anthony McIntosh. I am president and founder of SSE Advisors, a strategic business and consultant organization. I focus on helping organizations build sustainable success. Uh, I will say one thing that I have a couple of things excited about in 2021 is, first of all, it's not 2020. So that's exciting within itself. But secondly, you know, I've been working on a couple of things. So there are some exciting things that I've been working on to come in 2021. So just looking forward to doing a couple of things. Uh, what I would like for everyone to remember as you think about 2021, remember flexibility and adaptability. 
that's what you're going to have to think about as it relates to 2021. Uh, everything, just think of 2020 as accelerated change. And in order to really grow and build sustainable success in 2021, you're going to have to be flexible and you're going to have to be adaptable. So that's what I would like to leave you with. I like it, Osei. Thank you for the, the tidbit. <laughs> uh, Makweta, you you with us? Yes, can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. <clears throat> Excuse me. My name is Maquella Williams. I'm the founder and CEO of a nonprofit organization and publication anchored on the same name and vision proof of success. Our vision, our mission is to provide knowledge and resources to empower women to improve their quality of life. Through the pandemic, we went through a struggle as far as in the past. We have a magazine that comes out annually once a year where women are sharing their success stories, not only as a, as a healing process for themselves, but for women to read the magazine. Through the pandemic, we have done fundraisers to keep that print in, in operation for the women and for reentry, domestic violence, human trafficking, uh, recovery, um, and different issues that women go through. Today, hey, it's Giving Tuesday. So we're reaching out for any organization or anyone wanting to give a donation to Giving Tuesday, please go to our website, www.envisionprovingsuccess.com, our Facebook page, to give a donation to help us with our printing of the magazine. We have a mentorship program, Finding Your Truth, um, and different programs and workshops this Saturday, December the 5th, we're doing a scrapbooking, scrapbooking your life, your business, as a way, um, you know, um, I grew up with, um, and I'm going to hold you up too much, but I grew up with my mother doing scrapbooks, and it's a way to go back to see your legacy, creating a legacy that you don't have to go online and buy this right here, but a personal thing that you want to give to your family or to your children and whatnot. So check out our website, and thank you for listening. Thanks, Ms. McQuetta. I dropped your uh, your website in the chat so people can go take a look at your website. Thank you. Um, yeah, no problem. And happy Giving Tuesday. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So um, I believe we have everybody but one person. Um, but Justin, you kind of, you did your presentation, but did you have anything that, that else you would like to share with the group? Uh, yeah. I mean, we we are able to look forward to 2021 because I think we're getting back to our social responsibilities. Um, we were able to grow through a pandemic and we have given away a lot in time and energy specifically to 501c3 nonprofits as part of our group. And so I think looking forward is we've been nerds for five years. We were finally recognized this past year as one of the top um, global change management companies and national B2B companies by Clutch. They're the number one agency directory. So I mean, we're, we're now at the five-year plan where we actually hit uh, a lot of our BHAG and we're turning attention back to trying to build infrastructure and healthier relationships. So I think to, to Anthony's point about flexibility and change, I think we're just trying to connect with good people and we're trying to remove some of the um, maybe not so healthy client relationships that we've had as an agency over the last few years for just working with people that more feed into what we're trying to accomplish as an organization. Yeah, well, congrats on five years. I don't know if you were there the whole time, but to the organization, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> yes, of course. And thank you again for being here today. Absolutely. All right, last and certainly not least, the one and only Jill K. Frost. Thank you, J. Avery Frost. You gonna or Jennifer, Jennifer Avery Kathleen Frost. Dang. She used my phone uh, number. I know, right? So I am uh, the owner and founder of Articulated Wisdom. We are a communications and outreach firm. Uh, we basically help clients tell their stories, basically. Um, we do uh, work in a number of fields and um, I kind of feel like, Otto, this hasn't been a bad year on the business side. Um, because I do uh, political and issue campaigns, there have been two political campaigns that I've been able to work on this year, um, which is an unusual year for us to have two issue campaigns in the same year. So uh, not a bad year business-wise, um, but everything else-wise, you know, 
it's been 2020. Um, I am for 2021 looking forward to this, but in person, um, I am looking forward to in-person gatherings again. Uh, first quarter of 20, we started kind of pushing more event work. Um, and obviously at the end of first quarter, that all went away. So I'm looking forward to building that part of the business and, um, but really looking forward to in-person stuff. I think that um, my hope is that we don't get back to normal, we get back to better. I think there's some things that have stretched us in 20. I think when we look back on it, we will count them as blessings. Um, there, have, it's been tough, but I think we will count some of it as blessings. I know that everybody on this call at some point in 19 or even early 20 said, ooh, if I could just take a beat. Well, the universe gave us a beat, a big beat, a long beat, a, a, a beat, right? Where we got to be a little quiet and um, hopefully we won't look back and see that we missed some opportunities to learn to connect in different ways, to learn to take a beat. Um, but uh, as for 20, I'm over it. And um, just looking forward to the better and the new in 21. Yeah, thank you. Now, some way I'm going to steal that back to better thing. And well, you can't steal. It's not mine. Uh, Michelle Obama has a podcast and uh, it's featured on Spotify. And one of the first episodes, she uh, did a piece on the value of girlfriends. And one of her girlfriends was talking about uh, they were talking about pandemic and, and Michelle Obama said, you know, she can't wait to get back to normal. And this girlfriend, a writer, very wise woman, I don't remember her name though, um, said that she was hoping that we get back to better. And from the moment I heard that, I had been using it. And I heard it in the, the top of the pandemic and I have been borrowing it um, since then. But Michelle Obama's podcast is everything. It really is quite good. Hmm. I'm gonna have to, I wanna hear that episode, uh, but that does bring me to a great point. So the last thing to chat about with you all is when we're coming together again. And so typically at this meeting, we would talk about uh, coming back for our annual meeting. Uh, last year at this time, we we're talking about our go all first for now uh, and only go all black gala um, that we got to do uh, at the beginning of the year, which was really cool. Um, but as you were talking, um, the idea of back to better uh, really started resonating with me as far as what are we gonna do for the annual meeting? First of all, I don't know. Obviously it's gonna be virtual or maybe half virtual depending on what we're looking at for real, um, but responsibility says it'll be virtual. Um, and then, so how do we create a cool experience that is not just an annual meeting, but isn't a party because we can't come together. Uh, but the idea of back to better and how do we harness the energy from, from 2020 um, so there's been a lot of uh, change that's been a brewing, um, the reckoning as people are starting to call it that happened earlier this year as far as race relations are concerned. Um, but when we started 2020, we said the, the idea is to go all black. Um, so we did a large event where 99% of our vendors were black. I mean, the only things that we couldn't control were like literal supplies, the goods that made the things that we gave out, right? Uh, but we can control that better and we can get back to better, whereas we do more intentionality with shopping black, with shopping with each other, business to business, uh, business to consumer, the whole shebang. And so I would love it if when we come back and it'll be the third week of January, because that's when our anniversary is, January 18th is our anniversary. Um, so sometime around then we will come together and there'll be details that'll follow. Um, but I, I enjoy uh, both looking back a retrospective because a lot happened for COAC this year too. Um, but then looking forward, um, I think our annual meeting should always have um, a dictate, like a, let's go forth, you know, um, and as a group. And every year our collective organization and our collectivity uh, gets stronger. Um, and each year we, we demonstrate more and more how we can work together and how we want to expand that. And so I, I there might be something to this back to better thing. Um, moral of the Maybe story. back to black. Back to black. That's a, you know. Okay, never mind. I was gonna go all the way. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I digress. Um, Otto, what's that? You know, I get distracted by the chat. Shortnorth.org. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> um, 
I was going to make an announcement at the appropriate time, but then after I made the announcement, you were like, would you please put it in the chat? So I was putting in the chat early. There's a new um, grant that has a very quick turnaround if your business is located either downtown, Franklinton, or short north. Um, it opened up today. It closes tomorrow afternoon. What? They will make the decision on December 4th. Wow. Is, that is it for profit businesses? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm going to make a joke, but we're going to see a lot of this happening over the next like two weeks because there's, there's a whole some money to move that's through. That's yeah. Different. Yeah. I mean, I, I, when I, when I saw that they're going to, it opened up the first, closes the next day and decisions will be made the fourth. I said, wow. Okay. They're really trying to get the money out. Goodness. So, you know, I would just say to everybody, keep your eyes and ears open. Keep your network open. Keep your financials ready. Because <laughs> there's going to be more things getting stood up. Yeah. Well, hopefully they deliver in the checks on the 5th. Right. That's right. No, no, actually, they got the date. No, they actually, they said the date. It's really kind of interesting. You have to pick up your check at a designated place on the 11th. Oh, that's still pretty so, cool. So, I mean, they're pretty really fast. just like. <laughs> yeah. Get this money out of here. No, seriously, because people are then checking on the check. So are you going to cash that check? Because you need to cash that check and get it out of my account so I could say I gave it away. Um, <laughs> <okay. laughs> Giving out the check isn't enough. Uh, so yeah, but please share that with anybody you know in your network that is in that region. Um, part of the problem with some of this stuff is we don't hear the word um, and we don't share it quick enough. Uh, so I'm going to make sure that that gets into the... To the um, I mean, in that region, we don't have a huge ton of black owned businesses, but we do have black owned businesses. So Avery, the businesses that got um, help from us this summer, can we just send that uh, link to them? Yep. I was gonna send it to uh, guy and girl, but if we can just send it to the people who got checks from us, because they were all short North businesses. Yes, so um, I would definitely, I definitely wanna do that. And I was thinking the same thing. Um, the grant eligibility area is funny. I'm going to just share it because I have it up. Um, so area A and area B is what we're looking at. So that's uh, King Avenue to the north, 70 to the south, uh, Parsons to the east, and Twin Rivers Drive to the west. Um, so if you, that's actually a huge, uh, that's a large area. Um, so there, if you know people, please share that information. Um, and I know that I will be sharing. Well, you, you see the other area is the downtown area that stretches over to Franklinton uh, yeah. and pretty far east. And of course, Intelligent Office is located in the middle of that. So can your, right. can, can, uh, your customers, if, they, if their business address is your address, can they, can't they apply for that? I believe it was worth trying. Right. <laughs> yeah, we gotta work smarter, not harder. Um, uh, yeah. I, had a, I had a couple inquiries uh, today to sign up, so I think there are some people <laughs> that might <be> try. <laughs> and uh, how much credit cards have been run already? How much is it? Do you, do you know? Yes, it's uh, the grants are ten thousand dollars. Wow. Yeah. I mean, there's no levels or anything. It's just. Ten thousand dollars. Cool. Well, yeah. You might have a lot of new tenants down there, Otto. Right, because it's like you. I can I can join y'all and still get a bunch of money. <laughs> I mean, that's a good opportunity cost, in my opinion. Anyways, a lot of people are home based, or they um have their choosing cell phones. They don't have like good, that kind of presence, and so for the investment for what you're getting, and then also for the potential hopefully the possibility promise of getting that grant can't promise it obviously um but i think that's pretty cool uh, mm -hmm. something to think about people this video won't go out that soon so if you um please if you know people uh, who need to apply or could apply it please uh share that with them i'm gonna spend my time in the morning getting that information out and then i'll send this out later tomorrow um but yeah sorry um attention deficit uh, but for the annual meeting if you have thoughts if you want to be part of the conversation for what we put together um, that got your deal. 
Um, no, I'm, that, yes, I do want to be a part of the conversation, okay. but also um, we've been talking about partnering with a couple other organizations to bring in a speaker. And the challenge is, who is that speaker that can do what we're talking about having them do or say what we're talking about having them say, um, who is also in our price point? And, you know, the more organizations we bring on, the, the lower or the easier the lift. But um, also the more organizations we bring on as partners, the, the broader the speaker has to be, if that makes sense. So if you know of a speaker who can speak to uh, us and you all know who we are, uh, you know who you are, uh, that you'd like to hear as a part of our annual meeting, um, let us know and we can start that outreach. Um, you know, it'll be virtual. So some speakers are a lot more affordable than they were a year ago and some uh, haven't dropped their pricing all that much. I, I don't, I don't know, know a speaker I recommend, but I, um, the National Association of African American Insurance Agents is hosting an event. And again, everybody's trying to make this virtual strategy fun and creative. But one of the things they're doing is the, in the breakout rooms, they have a different DJ with a different uh, music type from R&B, jazz, et cetera. So it's coming up in the next couple of weeks. So I haven't experienced it yet, but just that whole concept of trying to do something different, something fun, uh, and engaging people through this medium. Uh, so that's going to be interesting. That's the first time I've seen that kind of strategy mm -hmm. um, implemented. So that may be something to consider. I'll let you know how it goes. Okay. I can't dance. Maybe they have the picture of you dancing. You know, hold your well, yeah, actually, um, people do dance. They just the push their laptops back further, no chairs, and you just stand in there dancing on screen. Um, well, Star Jones hosted a party for Kamala Harris. Um, it was election night, but not really. It's, I don't know. I don't even know what we're calling election night right now. But um, once the race had been called, uh, they did a online party, and there was a DJ. There were people kind of checking in from all, all, you know, it was mostly AKAs, but there were people checking in from all over the country. Um, the technology is a struggle still because if the DJ, if you're hearing the music, then that's kind of all you're hearing. And so people are kind of shouting and star is like, you know, hey, so-and-so, I see you. And it was, you know, so the tech, they didn't have quite the technology. So I'm interested to see what a formal conference would look like so yeah let us know what that looks like yeah. and we do have sherry hamilton in our midst so uh, there is that figure that yeah. out yeah. Mm -hmm. she can figure it out <laughs> yeah, we'll have to enlist and uh, maybe also shout out <laughs> <laughs> one, of the, one of the things we incorporate too is an app if it's like a conference or convention so people can navigate that way without having to dig through email like where's my zoom link for this mm -hmm. session or that session okay. yeah yes yeah, so we even thought about sending out goodie packages um uh you know in advance we didn't know what the goodie packages would look like like i've gotten um uh i did a mixology class and they sent a box with the the alcohol and all the ingredients that I needed to learn how to make this particular drink. Um, you know, people have sent dinners, they've sent, um, Sandra, you know, National Coalition of 100 Black Women, we sent confections to you guys. Sandra was one of our trailblazers uh, for 2020 for economic empowerment. Go oh, Sandra. Yes, yeah, Sandra. <laughs> and um, so we did that. We had a, uh, a sister in Pickerington who made these confections and we delivered them day of. Um, so people are really trying to figure it out and, um, and you know, keep within a, a certain price point. So if you have ideas, absolutely. Or you want to be a part of the team coming up with ideas, uh, we'd love to have you. Yeah, just let me know. Uh, and we'll, um, I'm going to try to find a way to mix it, business and fun. Um, it will see what happens. I still am, am pretty committed to the idea um, or a dinner or something. Maybe uh, it'll, and for that kind of thing, obviously there'll be 
ticket price to it, you're gonna have to pay for it. Um, but like feature some black businesses, maybe like uh, wine and something from Camelot. They have a menu, they have all the bottles of wine, right? And they're a member. So we'll try to think of um, something creative to do with that. Julian, were you about to say something? Okay. No, I didn't realize I unmuted myself. Sorry, Avery. <laughs> <No problem. laughs> yeah, so yeah, just let me know if uh, anybody's interested in participating in that way. Um, and we will be sending out at least to save the date and like imminently, um, and then probably building the bones around it as most of us are doing in 2020. Um, but we will uh, be coming together January 21. So please keep an eye out. Uh, as soon as you hear about it, let your friends know. Um, and as always, I will digest this information um, for everybody and send it out to membership uh, later tomorrow. So um, I believe I have everything kind of that people shared and I will keep get pulled the information from the chat. Um, so unless there's anything final, 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 we will be uh, wrapping for the year. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy holidays, everybody. Please stay safe. Uh, mask up, do the whole thing. Stay away from people. The pandemic <laughs> is real. Nah, for real, though. Like, so stay away from people. And uh, quarantine. Um, hit the grocery store. Are, is anybody watching the wines things? I mean, any place. I don't think people are hearing him anymore. I've been.